When we apply the Blur Data URL prop to our Next.js images, it can provide a very cool effect based on the colors of the actual images. Let's learn more about that. Hello and welcome, I'm Dave. Today we will learn how to use the Next.js Blur Data URL Images prop, and I'll provide links to all resources in the description below. I'll also provide a link for you to join my Discord server where you can discuss web development with other students and you can ask questions that I can answer and receive help from other viewers too. I look forward to seeing you there. So what is a Blur Data URL? I'm in the Next.js docs and it says a Blur Data URL is a data URL to be used as a placeholder image before the source image successfully loads. And it only takes effect when it's combined with the placeholder attribute or prop, if you will, when it's set equal to blur. And it must be a base64 encoded image as well. So it's a very tiny image that's going to be enlarged and blurred, as they say here, 10 pixels or less. And this, of course, loads before your actual image. So you see that blurred image coming in. So let's learn more about that. Today, we are going to talk about two different types of placeholders. The first is a prop for the Next.js images component that is referenced right here. And the second is a recommendation from the Next.js docs on how to create your own blur data URL. So we'll get to that second one in a little bit. Let's look at the placeholder prop first. So I'll just go to that right here in the doc. We can see placeholder is usually defaulted to empty. So we can set it to empty or it just already has the default value or we can set it to blur. And when we set it to blur, that's when we need the blur data URL to go with it. Now note they say if the source of the image is from a static import, so, and then of course it has to have one of these extensions as well, which are your typical image extensions like JPEG or PNG, WebP or AVIF, it says. Then the blur data URL will be automatically populated. So we'll look at how that works and we'll look at exactly what a static import of an image is. But then for dynamic images, which is the typical case, you must provide the blur data URL prop. So we have to create that value. And this is where that second placeholder comes in. Next.js recommends this dependency called placeholder. Now notice it's spelled differently, P-L-A-I-C-E or placeholder, and it helps with the base64 data URL generation. So we'll look at how all of that works. And we're in VS Code now, and I have an example project set up. Notice we're importing coffee pick from the location of our coffee JPEG here. So we are importing this coffee pick, and it is a static import. And this is an important definition here. This is the type that Next.js will go ahead and create a blur data URL for without applying it here in the image component. As you can see, I've got placeholder set to blur, and that would normally cause an error if we didn't provide a blur data URL. But because this is a static import, we don't have to provide it. Next.js will just do that on its own. So let's look at how that works in the browser. I've got Chrome open and this is the example project. It just has a link to the static example and then a link to the dynamic example here from the home page. And I've also got the network tab open in DevTools. I've disabled the browser cache. I'm going to set the throttling to fast 3G. So we should be able to see just a little bit longer appearance of that blurred image before it goes ahead and loads the actual image. Now in dev mode with the images right here on the same machine, it usually loads pretty fast. So if you don't throttle a little bit, you probably wouldn't see the blurred image at all. So I'm going to click static now and we should see the blurred image for just a little bit, there we did, before we see the regular image. And it's just kind of a brown blob. Let me go ahead and double click that URL right here inside of DevTools. And now you can see what that blurred image is going to look like before the other image loads. It's based off the colors in the original image, but Next.js doesn't do a great job of generating that really. So we're going to look at that suggestion that the docs had about placeholder with the alternate spelling, and it actually does a much better job of creating these blurred data URLs. I'm going to switch throttling back to no throttling, and I'll go back to our home page. And now, 
let me go ahead and switch it back to the Fast 3G once again, and I'll click on the dynamic example so you can see the difference with the data URL that I generate with placeholder. And there you saw it, it does have a few more colors than the original one that we saw that was generated by Next.js with the static import. So this was the dynamic import. And notice we have the data URL over here. It says data colon image. You can see this right here in DevTools if I click on it. And you can see the full URL up here. And notice we've got a lot more color in this blur data URL. So I do like that better. Let's look at how that is generated. Back in VS Code, this is my dynamic page with this image example. Now notice the difference here. I'm importing a function I created called get base 64. That's coming from my lib directory. And then I'm using that function here and I'm giving it the URL where the image is. Now I have this image locally here in my public folder, so I just gave it the localhost 3000, but you can use this on remote images. Now remember, if you have remote images, you need to set that up in your next config.js file as well to allow that domain to provide those images. So I've covered that in other tutorials before and you can find that in the docs. But just remember, remote images need to be set up in the next config file. So if you're pulling in, wherever you're pulling in the image, you just pass that URL to this function and then you get the blurred data URL back. So I'll break down how that function works, but I'm just passing the blurred data URL in right here because here is the prop that we added to the image component along with placeholder being set to blur. You need to do this for any type of dynamic image that's not one of the static imports that we looked before. Now let's check out that function. And to see the origins of the function, we are looking at the placeholder. Again, notice the spelling, P-L-A-I-C-E. We're looking at those docs and it says Node.js remote image. And that's what I designed my function to handle was remote images. But of course I showed how I was pulling in a local one as well. Now notice though, in this, they use thenables and I didn't want to use a thenable. So I wrote my function just a little bit differently, but it does the same thing. And I will show you mine as well. But you can go to the placeholder.co website and look at the docs and you will see this example as well. So it's just pulling those in, it's generating that base 64 and sending it back out. Back in VS Code, you can see I'm importing get placeholder from placeholder. And of course, you need to add this as a dependency in your project then. It should be listed in the package JSON, so you would be typing npm i and then placeholder to install that in your project. And then once you have it, you can import get placeholder like I have. And then we have the export default async function get base 64, and it accepts an image URL that is a string. Now notice I am fetching that image URL. And once I get the response, I'm checking to make sure that it's okay, make sure I actually have the response. But once we do, then we await the response and call array buffer. We get that buffer back. That looks a lot like what you saw in that website example from their docs, but then I change things here just a little bit, the order of things, so I'm not using a thenable, I'm using another await. So now I'm destructuring base 64 like they were, but on the await get placeholder here, I'm passing in the buffer.from, and it has the other buffer here. And of course, you could look into Node.js and MDN to learn all about array buffers and the buffer here. But overall, you don't need to know that. You just need to know how to use the dependency placeholder. And that is what this code will allow you to do. And then I'm logging that base64 URL right there, also returning it here. And of course, I'm logging an error. If I get that, I'm logging the error stack. But overall, that placeholder is what allowed us to have that more colorful blur data URL. And if I open up the terminal here, we can see inside, let me scroll through, we had a data URL, there it is. So this is what the data URL looks like. It's just a long string of characters, numbers, letters, and so on. And it starts out with that data colon image, and then 
all of the rest. So I'm back in Chrome with this image gallery example, and I wanted to show one more time like I did at the beginning. This becomes very useful for an image gallery because you're loading all these nice colorful blurred URLs as the images load, and they eventually all come in. And notice I did slow this down again. I was on fast 3G with my disabled cache, just so you could see that better. But now I showed you the function that would handle generating one data URL for one image. Let me show you how I do all of these at once. Okay, I'm in VS Code, and this code is not in my example project, but it is part of that example image gallery that I was just showing you. So it essentially has the same function here that generates that base64 data URL for one image, but we need to call it on multiple images, and you don't wanna do that one at a time. That's creating a waterfall, and you'd have to wait on each one. So let's look at the function that I'm using underneath. And now you can see that I say make all requests at once instead of awaiting each one. We are avoiding a waterfall. So here I'm defining base64 promises. And then I'm mapping over the array of images that I received from the Pexels API. And I'm calling that get base64 on each image. But notice I'm not awaiting here. I'm just getting back all the promises. And this is where promise.all comes in. So now for my base64 results, I'm awaiting promise.all and passing in all of those base64 promises. And I had 15 images on that page. Now I'm defining my photos with blur photo array. And then I once again map over those images and I need to match up the results in that same order and promise.all does keep them in order. So I'm matching those in and here I've got the base64 results with the iterator in here. So it matches the same one. So I get the right blur data URL with the right photo and I'm returning the photo here. So then I have an array that now has the blur data URL, and that's what I'm returning from this function. Now, this isn't included in that example project I created, but I just wanted to show you how you could use the function above that was used on one image, how you could use it for many images without creating a waterfall. You want to use promise all and just request all of them at once without the await here. So if you hadn't checked that out before, this is something I've talked about with Next.js requests before, but this is also very important as you load images. You want that to happen as fast as possible. Well guys, I hope this tutorial about Next.js and the blurred data URL prop has helped you out. And if you like what you see here in my example Next.js image gallery, it's a project that I've created for the Net Ninja channel. So that should be released on the Net Ninja channel very soon. You'll want to check that out. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection, and a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you, and thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day, and let's write more code together very soon.